First of all, my humble obeisance is in the lotus feet of my Paramaradhya. Guru Patpadma Um Vishnu Asish Mad Bhakti Pradhyan Keshogu Swami Maharaj and my Shiksha Guru in the lotus feet of my Shiksha Guru Shri Srila Bhakti Vedam Swami Maharaj. Oh, today is very hospital, like yesterday, Madhvendra Kuripad, the birthday, is appearance day, both Sarsham, of Madhvendra Kuripad and Madhvacha, Srinivasacha. I think that uh, the speakers have told about this explain. Padha Maharaj, he has explained. But you should know that Krishna was controlled by Mahendra Puripad. And in some cases I think Madhvendra Puri is more superior than Prabhupada Maharaj too. Far superior. I think Pranath Maharaj cannot touch a lot of feet of Madhvendra Puri. He is the root of Prema Bhakti, Prem Kalpatar. And Srinath Ji Seva he manifested. And he came to him and get darshan. Pradad Maharaj Nishim De. And for momentary, but Madhendra Puripad and Bali Maharaj, oh, often he used to give darshan in Shruta. But Madhendra Puripad, oh, a special maid servant of Radhika. So hard. He is the, the root of oh, Braja Rasa who brought in this world. And then Ishwar Puripad came and then oh, he get all these things from Mahaprabhu. Sabdamodha, Raya Ramananda, Sargoswami and Dashkam. So Madhvan Puri is so high. He has love and affection, special for Radha and Krishna Kanti. And also Sri Dimasa Acharya. Oh, he was the disciple of Gopal Ghat Goswami. And he was trained like a Siksha Guru by Jiv Goswami. And <coughs> he introduced so many uh, melodies of Kirtan. And he was so high class of devotee that Abharvuk Goswami, all Goswami depended on him. Oh, that you should go to teach in Bengal all the literature written by us, by Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, Bhai Goswami. And he too can he was going with his subordinate, Raghunath, Narottam Thakur and Shyamanan, and the way some backward looted all the books. 
they thought that a oh, youthful left jewel. The astrologer told to Deckers, the leader, that, oh, this is full of treasure. <coughs> and for this they, what? They stole away the cart with whole books and they kept there. Now they three became mad, Srinivas and all the others. Anyhow, Srinivas Acharya sent both subordinates to Bengal and I am here until the, I will discover the books. And then <coughs> the king was the oh, leader of all the diet But he was also a devotee. <coughs> Though he used to loot out so many things, but he used to uh, meditate and hear Srimad Bhagavat especially. There was a Bhagavat Pandit in his council and he used to come and to read Srimad Bhagavat, explain Srimad Bhagavat. Srinivasa Acharya, in a very simple form, dress, he went there where Bhagavat was going. He was hearing also. When Srimad Bhagavat was finished for that day, then Srinivas told, Acharya told, May I explain something about this, what he has explained? Then he said, Oh, yes, I want that you should explain something about this. He was speaking on Gopi Gita or Brahma Gita, but he could not explain so hard. Then when he stood, he stood up and began to explain, oh, himself weeping and making all audience speaking. That has been explained by Vishwanath Chakvarti Thakur Sanatana Goswami Ji Goswami Srimad Bhagavatam. All began to go. And then at once the king came and fled, did Pranamsa's tongue and told, I want to take Diksha initiation from you and want to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. Then he told the yes, and then he took initiation, he gave initiation. And then he told, uh, the king told, I want to give you some donation for this, Dakshina, the Guru Dakshina. He told, what? Dakshina can you give? Then you say, as you like, I will give. Oh, you are promising, yes. Oh, then you should try to manage to bring that cord full of all the books. Oh, it is with me. <laughs> <laughs> with me. <laughs> and I, my astrologers told that three persons are coming, devotees from Vrindavan, and they have a lot of jewels, more than jewels. And that is why we too. But we could not thought that they are jewels. Now, hearing from you, I now know that they are more than jewels. Jewel cannot give Krishna Bhakti. They cannot help us, but that box, a thousand and thousand. You are coming only by that grace. Chaitanya Charitamrit, box of Jeeva Goswami, Sanatan Goswami, Rupa Goswami, all. And they were fishing. So this was Srinivas, Acharya, a very high class of devotees. So we pray to their Lord of Faith that they should sprinkle their mercy to us. <laughs> now I want to come on the subject that we begin in Los Angeles. Oh, very, very high class classes there, very attractive, powerful, all inspired in that classes. We finish up to Adav Sattva Tatas Adu Sangha of Bhajan Kriya We touched something, bhajan kriya. We cannot oh, explain so elaborately. It will take so many years and years. But we did it. We explained the essence of all the bhajan kriya. Now I want 
that knowing bhajan kriya we should try to do bhajan and fully what fully follow all the principles of bhakti if you are hearing only it will not do we will have to follow swami ji came my shiksha guru bhakti vedan swami maharaj and he instructed all he wrote so many books but why of oh, so many leaders high high class of leaders they became against him and they left the mission and again like hawks and pigs animal life they began to why so we should know that that chance should not come in our life so we should know pure bhakti not a upadhi ki that we explained in vasanta there is bhakti pure bhakti there is aupadhik bhakti there are some sang siddha aadesh siddha karma mishra gyan mishra yog mishra so many kinds of pure bhakti is there in this world there is so we should know that what are that anarts that makes bhakti impure so there are so many if you are chanting so much but making offenses to nam to vishnu to guru and to krishna and to epics that name is nama parad not your name and i think that most of us are doing that with offenses because we don't know what are, what are the nama aparad what is the dhama aparad vishnu aparad guru aparad we don't know so we should know and then we should purify our pure bhakti and it will come then we can have nishta and then nishta to reach otherwise not so i want to explain something about anas what are these anas first of all ten kinds of namapara you remember all ma full baba oh. baba you know ten can you explain ah uh? explain Oh, don't think that dand is so dand. This is so heavy, and we cannot uh, carry it. Don't think it burden, but you should think it Narayan Swarupa, the infestation of Narayan, and it will save you. My Guru, their whole life in the last. when he became some old he left my too more than 70 years to 60 years yes i still i have so don't think it load or any burden it will save you but i see now they they, they think like so Oh, then you should define what are ten nama prat. We should try to be very careful and to give up nama prat. Om Gyan Dvaranda Sthiram Dana Sala Kaya Chakshuran Militam Yena Tasmay Sri Guru Vai Namah. So now discussion of Sri Baja Mahasya coming to the subject of Anatta Navriti. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Chaitanya Charanamrita has written Bahu Janma Kodi Yadi Shravana Kirtan Tapanai Pai Krishna Pai Pramadan On my chair and holy name for millions of births but one is affected with ten offenses to the holy name he cannot achieve success he cannot gain Krishna he cannot gain Krishna Prem So we should try very hard to understand what they are by the mercy of Guru Vaishnav 
give them up really far away. So first, the ten Nama Prads, Vaishnava Ninda. No. What is it there? Yes. Go, go. So question may come. Why it has been not told Guru? Huh? Why it has been told Satan Ninda? It said, because it's only a very foolish or ignorant person would blaspheme or criticize his own spiritual master. But it's very hard for us to understand who is actually pure Vaishnava. And also because Vaishnava and Guru is not a different thing. Shikshi Guru and Dikshi Guru is not separate. All bona fide Gurus, all bona fide Vaishnavas are our Guru. So therefore, because we cannot understand who is actual Vaishnava, like Srila Gokshoda Babaji Maharaj, he's wandering around with no danda, no sannyas, only wearing one cloth. So he's also tasting Krishna Prem, he's behaving sometimes like madman. So if he came here, what would we do? We could not understand his position, therefore we would criticize him and fall down. So first apparatus is Vaishnav Ninda, six types of Vaishnav Ninda. Offense to Vaishnav. Hanti, Dvesh, Chanindati, Nabhashnava, Minandanan, Krudati, Naharshum, Isat, Patantishat, six causes of fall down. Hanti means to be the Vaishnav. Dvesti, to be envious of Vaishnav. Nindati, to criticize a Vaishnav. Not to be, when seeing a Vaishnav, not to be, feel happiness, not to feel exaltation. And to feel anger at a Vaishnav. These are six causes of Vaishnava Parad. And not to welcome Vaishnav, not to feel happy when seeing Vaishnav. Because the holy name is situated in the heart of the Mahabhagavat. Therefore, if you criticize him in any way, even by mind, then the holy name which is situated in his heart will never manifest in your heart. So one should be very careful. Also now, number three coming is Guru Vagya. To disobey the order of the spiritual master. At the time of initiation, the disciple makes promises. Avoid sinful activity, intoxication, illicit sex, meat eating, gambling. At the time of initiation, the guru makes a promise to the disciple, I will take you out of this ocean of birth and death, put you in the Goloka Vrindavan. But the disciple also makes a promise, because the relationship between guru and disciple is reciprocal relationship. So the time of initiation, one makes a firm promise if one breaks those regular principles, that means he is disobeying the order of the spiritual master. Therefore, the mercy of the spiritual master cannot come upon him. So to think, or well, Sanskrit, I'm not fully sure of. But to but the glories. If anyone not obeying his guru, then what is this? This guru avagya, disrespect of the spiritual master. Guru avagya or aparad. What? Same thing. Disobey the order means to disrespect him, not to not to give full worship to him, full respect. This apparatus. Oh. Guru Vakya is apparat, but more against doing something, beating him, criticizing him. Oh, this is more. Oh. Then Bhakti will come, uh, be uprooted by elephant, mad, nama apparat. So we should do always get. I think that you should not criticize anyone, even he is not devoted. By criticizing, all bad qualities come to you, in you, and then you will be deviated from bhakti. So what to tell a guru, a Vaishnav, or oh, you should not criticize anyone. You can pray something for him, but not criticize. But if guru is there, and he is telling something about that, be careful of, this is not criticized. To save disciples, he can tell. Go on. After that. So, the glories of the Holy Name have been described exclusively in the Sastra. Vede Ramanaya Chaiva Purani Bharatattava Adavante Chayadamadde Chayahari Sarvatta Girti. If we look in all the Vedic scriptures, only one thing is described in the beginning, the middle and the end. That is the glories of the Holy Name. So to think that the Holy Name is Artavad, that means all the Vaishnavas, in order to encourage everyone to chant the Holy Name, they have described the glories, but actually the glories are not so high. For example, Sri Haridas Thakur, he was in the house of Sri uh, Rabinath, 
after Raghunath Das Goswami, his father. So discussion was going on, so Sri Haridas Thakur said, Halaya Mukti Pabi Parve Pramidam. Koli Koli Namabas Sruka Mukta Pai. In this Kali Yuga, one can easily attain Mukti simply by chanting Namabas, that means the shadow of the holy name. So one Brahmana, Gopal Champa, he became disgusted with that statement. Oh, how you can say simply by a shadow of the holy name, one can attain Mukti. Mukti is not obtained even after millions and millions of lives of Sadam Bhajan. And you are saying just by Sanketam, Parihashambas, Dovan Hilaya Mevala, even by chanting and neglectfully indicating something else, that you can attain Mukti. It's not possible. If Mukti is, not a, if mukti is attained by this, then I cut off your nose. Sri Namachari Hadrasta, I said, if Mukti is not attained by Namabas, don't worry, I'll cut off my own nose. So because that Brahmana made offense to the feet of Haridas Thakur, he could not understand the glories of the holy name. In three days, he attained leprosy, his nose and his lotus-like fingers dropped off. So this is called Atavad. This well, is not bad. No. One should not do Atavad to holy name. So, also, if one worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, or his multifarious incarnations. If one worships Vishnu and the demigods on the same platform, this one type of Nama Parad, isn't it? Yeah. Saying, Just to Narayan Deva, Brahma, Ruradi, Devata, Samatwane, Vivekshanam, Sapasandi, Dhruvam, Bhavet. If one worships Brahma or Rudra or the other, other demigods on the same level as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sapasandi, Dhruvam, Bhavet. He is called Pasandi or an offender. So, one time, also one should not try to interpret the holy name. For example, many people, they go to the scripture, they look in the dictionary, Hare Krishna, they try to give mundane explanation of the holy name. One time, the leader of the Sivala, the leader of the Vallabh Sampradaya, he came to Puri and he said to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Oh Mahaprabhu, I have given a commentary on the holy name. Would you like to hear it? So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I don't know any other description of the holy name. I know that the holy name is Shamasunda. I know the holy name is Yasodanandan. So this way Mahaprabhu never liked to hear any mundane explanation of Mahamantra. Mahamantra is directly Radha Krishna. So, also, one. After that? To disobey, to disrespect the Vedic scriptures. Especially the all Vedic scriptures, especially but especially Bhakti Shastra, to in any way minimize them, or to disrespect them, or to criticize, or by mundane tarika, tarika na pravistana, by your mundane intelligence try to cut the idea of the Vedic scriptures. This is also one type of nama parad, because the name and the shastra is not a different thing. So to criticize the shastra, which is nothing else but the maha mantra, by criticizing shastra you are criticizing the supreme personality of Godhead. So most importantly, is on the tenth one, is to mind while chanting Harinam to maintain mundane attachments. So this is to chant inattentively. This is the main one that we all I am also. Chanting the name. But even he has so much attachment to body and thinking that I am my this body. This is also normal. Knowing the glorification of name. And we are not chanting, not giving respect to name, and uh, oh, keeping face like that, chanting Hare Krishna, sleeping. This is also. And your Sutna teams give initiation to anyone who has no Shraddha in name. So, we should not make any disciple, otherwise in future they will quarrel and they will quarrel with their Gurudev and they will give up Gurudev and also Krishna they will give up. So we should not make so many disciples also. Be careful for all this. What is Dhamma Parath? Dhamma Parath.
Gananjana Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilitam Jainam Tasmai Shri Guruve Namaha So, just as you have ten offenses to the chanting of the holy names, so in the same way, you have ten offenses um, towards the holy dham. So, they're very they're, um, similar. This is the first offense of the holy name is to um, blaspheme devotees. So, in the same way, the holy dham to um, make some blasphemous statements about the holy dham, to consider the holy dham to be a material place and not to honor its transcendental nature. This is first offense. Um, second offense to the holy dham is to have some to have some to um, have some mundane um, conceptions in the holy dham to come to the holy dham and rather than staying in the holy dham and engaging in devotional activities but to come and want to um, make some material profit whilst in the holy dham doing business etc trying to make some material gain in the holy dham this is offense to the holy dham three um, to commit violence to the residents of the holy dham that one should see that whoever has come and taken shelter of the Holy Dham, whether um, they have taken birth in the Holy Dham, they're living in the Holy Dham, they're coming, they're doing bhajan in the Holy Dham, that then they're greatly um, fortunate personalities, just as Srila Gopi Shodas Babaji Maharaj. When any resident of Navadri Dham would come, then immediately he would give them all respects, honoring that, oh, a resident of the Holy Dham has come, and in this way, um, he would show that we should always give proper respects to those who are um, residing in the Holy Dham. Of course, when we say who actually is a Dham Basi, who actually is, is a real resident of the Holy Dham, then one who actually has realized the glories of the Holy Dham, who can um, see that the Holy Dham is Chinmoy Vastu, that is transcendental, and they have that transcendental vision, really they are, mem they are residents of the Holy Dham, really they are bridge Basis. But nevertheless, you may have those personalities who um, are within the Holy Dham. They may be Brahmanas. They may not be performing Aikantiki Bhakti, one-pointed devotional service. But still, they should be respected, as well as those others who are living within the Holy Dham. There are also some things. There should be no Seva Parad. In doing Archan, we should know fully how to do Archan and then follow our chant. Others neglecting, not obeying the Shastra about this, oh, maybe Dhamma and Shiva. There are 36 kinds of, oh, 32 kinds of Shiva Parad. So we should know and try to be careful from them. If all these Aparads has gone, even there is something unearthed. And that what Jeeva Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur in his Madhur Jakandamani, he has explained. And that are Ursamai, Gharan, Tarala and all. If Bhakti is not perfect, not pure, then this stage is there. And very critical at that time, very critical. If at that time no test is coming, whether you have left your position, your worldly wealth and reputations and your wife, children, even, but no nishtha, then you are bound to go down. So we should know what is anishthita bhakti. In brief. You should know and try to be very careful. Other by name, who will let be perfect. Thank you. Om Gyana Timaranda Sao Gyanandana Salaka Chakshur
मिलतम जे ना तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः सो शिल गुरुदेव ओरे मीचो एक्सप्लेन ब्रीफली द सिक्स टाइप्स ऑफ अनिश्चितता भजन क्रिया व्हेन समवन इज प्रैक्टिसिंग द एंगल्स ऑफ डिवोशनल सर्विस बिफोर व्हाइल देयर इज स्टिल सम अनार्था देन देयर प्रैक्टिस विल नॉट बी uh characterized by nishta steadiness hmm? the unsteadiness that they experience has been categorized into six aspects the first one is called utsaha mai utsaha mai is exactly like when a small child goes to school for the first time and then they begin to write they learn how to write the letter a a for apple uh, b for ball like this and then they go back home and they tell their mother and father oh i am a very great student i can write a for apple and b for ball actually they have no idea of what it means to be a student they have learned only a few things but now they think that they have learned many things and they are very qualified and because of this they become full of enthusiasm so much enthusiasm but this enthusiasm oh it is false it is coming from their pride this is called utsaha mai or false enthusiasm what will happen after some time they will come to a stage the next stage of anishta devakti is called ghana tara like this to the devotion that a boy who are initiated oh he think that by man oh we have achieved everything so similarly if we apply this analogy to the devotee some person he approaches the spiritual master and he receives hari naam and diksha and then oh he learns one or two verses like this and then he thinks he is very qualified he understands all siddhanta and shastra and he is a very great devotee now but actually he is in the most beginning stage and uh, not even born yet yet in his mind he is thinking he is great and from this uh, false conception of himself he has so much enthusiasm but what will happen or oh, after a little time some difficult challenges may come in his spiritual life so the next stage is called gana tarala gana means condensed and tarala means diluted in other words the intensity of his endeavor is not continuous sometimes he can show enthusiasm and other times he just cannot get out of bed hmm? he is, cannot move he has no enthusiasm at all why how will it come just like a child after a few days he went to school and the teacher told him you should write write the word scissors so he writes s i s no wrong o oh, s i c no wrong s i c i s o no wrong he's trying to write the word again and again he makes mistake and the teacher chastises him then he says all oh, this studying is useless why do i have to do this studying this is not important who needs this studying and he becomes frustrated and he wants to give up studying even so similarly the devotee when he goes a little further in his spiritual life and then he finds out oh what i'm doing is not pure bhakti pure bhakti is very high there are so many stages to go through or it may take many lifetimes even and then he may become discouraged his spiritual master asks him to do something but he finds it very difficult so he, he becomes discouraged and sometimes he's enthusiastic sometimes not this stage is called gana tarala the next stage is called vyuda vikalpa Vyuda vikalpa means when the mind is oscillating like a pendulum it swings one side towards renunciation then it swings back the other side towards material attachment the devotee is thinking oh i see that the associates of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu most of them were in household life like shri vas thakur and others they were very qualified they were in household life and it wasn't any obstacle for them so i can also be in household life and it will not be an obstacle then the next moment he thinks oh chaitanya mahaprabhu he left his household life eh? completely left everything when he was so young he left his old mother and young wife behind just to make progress in bhakti so i should also be like that i should not become entangled in material life i should be completely renounced and then his mind thinks but i should not be artificial we should try to be honest i have so many attachments coming in my mind and if i become artificial about this then it may Uh, rise up at some kind of uh, psychosis or anything or phobias and things like this and he makes some psychological adjustment thinks i should not be renounced i should be honest with myself i should get married and then he thinks 
But Raghunath Das Goswami, he ran away. He was mad, but he ran away from home. No, I should be renounced. Better to be renounced. There are no obstacles. You have more time to do bhajan. So in this way, this is called Vyuda Vikalpa. His mind is swinging from side to side like a pendulum. And he cannot decide whether to renounce the world or whether to um, follow the path of Grihastha Dharma. After this, he can come to the next stage. The next stage is called Vishay Sangara. Vishay Sangara means fighting in, with the uh, objects of sense gratification within the mind. He makes a vow. Okay, that's it. I'm not going to eat any more chocolate. Mm -hmm. And all day long he's thinking, I'll never take chocolate my whole life. I'll not take chocolate. Cho and he's thinking chocolate, chocolate all the time. And before he knows it, his friend says, Hey, do you want to borrow chocolate? Sure. <laughs> and then, oh. Mm -hmm. He's fighting with his mind. And the very thing he was fighting with, he ends up oh, becoming entangled in that. So this is called Vishay Sangara. After some time, another stage is there. That's called Niyamaksha. Niyamakshama means the inability to maintain vows. The devotee thinks, Oh, evam brataswa priyanamakirtya jatanuraga druta chitta utchay. If I make a vow to chant, Oh, one lakh harinam, or two lakhs harinam, even, then very soon I'll get Krishna praying. So he follows his vow for one or two days, then on the third day he becomes sick, he has cough and cold and a headache, and he cannot do anything. Even he does not touch his mala that day. So again and again he tries to make some strong vows in his life, but he has inability, he has no strength to follow them. This is called Niyamakshama. Then the next stage is called Tarangarangini, sixth stage. Tarangarangini means, en Rangini means enjoying or playing. In, in the taranga, the waves. If a devotee is trying to follow the principles of pure bhakti very, very nicely, he may not be very advanced, but he's trying to follow everything nicely. After some time, others will see, oh, he's a very high class of devotee, we like him, and they begin to give so many facilities, so much money, and gold watches, and cars, and donations of land, and temples, and many things come to him. Now, Instead, he, before he may have been somewhat sincere and looking inside and trying to search out the service of his Ishtadev. But now his mind is going outside and he's looking towards the money, the donations, the land, the respect, the name and fame, and all of these things. And the intensity of his bhajan becomes diluted because he starts to take it easy. He becomes somewhat leisurely and he begins to enjoy the facilities that mixed bhakti afford. If someone will practice Mishra Bhakti, Bhakti which is mixed with uh, impurities such as Karma, Gyan and Yoga, then it is inevitable that it will produce, it will attract so many material results and one becomes entangled with those things and they become a great impediment in spiritual life. So when the devotee has uh, overcome these six types of Anishtita Bhakti, then Still not in Nishta, there are a few more things he'll have to overcome. We'll hear this from the Lotus Lips of Srila Gurudev.
We should know something, still something is to do. And can you tell about life, big shape, pratipatti, deep, your soul? Samadhyanati manandasya gyananjana shalakaya Chaksuran militam jena tazmai shi gurudei namah Father Guru Shri Gurudev, I've been asked to speak something more about the obstacles they call persistent obstacles in the attainment of anishtita bhakti or anishtita bhajana kriya. We've heard about anishtita bhajana kriya and then in Nartanavriti, Srila Vishnath Chakravarti Thakur says that the order of the sequences, anishtita bhajana kriya, then a Nartanavriti, and then anishtita bhajana kriya. So there's still five obstacles in the way. Also, um, just as a small note, there was there's four kinds of anartas. We've heard of the aparads, and there's also those uh, anartas that come from uh, Sukrit Ota, our own past pious activities. Sometimes we see someone who's very uh, handsome or wealthy or very intelligent finds it difficult to surrender to Sri Guru because he has so much good karma that it's difficult for him to feel humble or to take instructions from others. So this is Sukritota, those... No, no, uh, mix. Not, yes. mix don't mix. Don't mix. That is more five... Five things. things. Also, yeah. five. come down. What is lie? Lie. Sl uh, sleepiness. This is an obstacle. When I was three levels. speaking, so many were sleeping. <laughs> oh, this is lie. <laughs> don't sleep. And there are th three gradations of lie. Generally, we'll see during the kirtan, like Gurudev just called for a kirtan to make sure no one was in lie. <laughs> so this will wake everyone up. Uh, so we generally see difficult if you're jumping around and dancing in the kirtan to fall asleep, although it does happen. <laughs> then also, uh, progressively, well, one is... One side was speaking something and kirtan was going. And a person was sitting on a uh, box. And when Kirtan began, oh, like Mridang and all were dancing, at once he fell down from the <laughs> One person, uh, uh, he went to Thakuji room for worshipping, Archan. And he was not coming till three hours. Then our Nishin, Pujapad Nishin Maharaj, he knew something that why he is not coming. Then he forcibly oh, opened the door and he was seeing that oh, he was sleeping. <laughs> this is life. <laughs> so you should be, uh, try to be careful. Srila Gurudev, I used to think when I was a new devotee, I'd see Brahmins and they would be sitting chanting their Gayatris and then falling asleep. And I used to think, oh, when you become advanced, you hold on to the string 
and it causes you to to fall asleep. <laughs> this is another stage of lie. The second stage is while hearing. First, during kirtan, one may have a tendency to sleep. Secondly, during hearing harikata, and finally, as Sri Sajjan Maharaj has described, while one is uh, doing smarnam or remembering the Lord. Especially more. when we will speak or explain tattva. Mm. <coughs> then so many will sleep. Because tattva is very hard sometimes. So in the time to time I tell that how you should dance and do good. Uh, the next of the five persistent obstacles is vik shape, uh, which means uh, distraction. Uh, one becomes distracted while doing devotional service. And the best example of this, of course, is gossiping during japa. Uh, and there are many others, of course. But this ability to be distracted from one's service is called vikshet. Then apratipati, this means to be inattentive or indifferent to devotional activities. Just like we may hear, oh, so, so, some nice devotee is giving harikata class. Oh, but I have to walk so far. Or... Well, I had so many things I have to get done first, and so we are indifferent. We we want to make investment in bhakti, but this obstacle comes where we're not always eager to always be absorbed. Uh, then, if you are chanting and remember your guru mantra, oh, so many. Huh? An idea coming, coming, because at that time they see that oh, his mind is empty. So so many kinds of. Oh, are coming. Oh, what will be that? What is that? Oh, I should um, try to control some many. I should. Oh, so many uh, activities <coughs> comes in the remembrance, and thus mala is in hand, but cannot chant time. And after some time, oh, what I am doing? So this is also big shape. Pati pati, then we have if you are here, keep your mind and heart here and here, all the class. But if you are <coughs> here, are thinking that, oh, I have left my children at home. And you are thinking about there. And they are thinking that, oh, my husband is. Oh, very lucky that he is in the association of high class of Vaishnava and always here. And what he is doing? He thinking of them, so they are better than you. <laughs> and they will benefit it and you lose. Oh, there, there is a story. There was a sadhu who went to Navadvip and he was just staying in a dharmasala or anywhere. Dharmasala you know, and he was just staying. And he saw, oh, there is a prostitute, prost, a prostitute, oh, in front of me in a house, and she is singing and so doing, and so many bad, bad persons are coming. Oh, what is nonsense? Whole night doing, and prostitute was doing. Oh, the sadhu is so high class. He is remembering Krishna, hearing Hari Katha meditating and serving and doing archa and how I am fallen. So she was repenting there. In the meantime, oh, death messengers came to that person, Sadhu. Oh, why you have come to take you? Where? Heaven? No. Ah, Halis plant. Why? Oh, I'm not that. Oh, she is like that. <laughs> you should go to her and you should take. I am not so culprit. Oh, no, no. We have come especially because Jamraj has just told us to bring that special person like he is always remembering that prostitute and his, her activity. So bring him. him. And for that is prostitute. <coughs> He was also going to die. Oh, at once messenger of Vishnu came and took away to beg. And he was, she was telling that I am not that personal. Oh, you should go to 
I have done so many bad activities. So you should know also that. Here thinking, here Harikatha, but you are thinking of here, there. And those who are not here, they are thinking that they are fortunate, they are associated. So you should not send your mind unheard anywhere else. Oh, you should be careful for, for this. Then more. Kasai means the tendency towards one's bad habits. In the past, we were always subject to so much anger, greed, lust, and these qualities. So we're trying to control them as devotees, but then we for easily we become angry at the other devotees, or we may feel lust toward devotee, or we may feel uh, greed to, oh, he has so much money, he's flying around the world with Gurudev, why don't I have money? So like that, we may these bad qualities that we had in material life may come back again in our devotional life. And then rasasvad means rasa, one has, when one has a choice between doing devotional service or engaging in material sense gratification, he chooses to engage in sense gratification and taste material ras. Thank you. Even nishta has not come. No nishta. There are so many things. If you want to know all these anaps, you should read bhajan rahasyam. And there we will see that there are uh, at least uh, uh, 16, four, 16 kinds of anarth. There you can. We are going to tell very shortly and briefly. If it, we have crossed these, even there are so many things. Can you tell? Uh, you? Huh? No, 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 no. No, no, no. I am. Now, what I say you can tell. You can tell some. Ah, yeah, yeah, that I want. Ah, better you should tell. Om Agyana Timiranta Sagananjana Salakaya Chakchurun Militang Jena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Bancha Kalpataru Bhascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanang Pavanebho Vishnavebho Namo Don't think that it is not essential to hear. Don't think like that. Otherwise, oh, chanting name and Harikatha will not do anything if you are not neglecting all these things. So be careful for all these things. Then your name will be pure, your harikatha will be pure, everything pure. So you should hear and be careful. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So, as Sri Gurudev command me to discuss about more on earth. Sri so Gurudev described here in very short, that if you want to know and overcome from anarthas, you have to go through Bhajan Rahasya, compiled by our seventh Goswami, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. He narrated there very elaborately about four anarthas and all four anarthas, four, four into four, sixteen types. Moreover, Srila Vishwanath Chakrit Thakur has explained in his Madhurja Kadamini that you overcome from that Utsavai Ghanatarana and Loi Vikshap etc. Still some anarthas are there in very minute form. <coughs> what are those? Sukriti Uttha, Duskriti Uttha, Aparad Uttha, Bhakti Uttha. What is Sukriti Uttha? Which we have done past. Sukriti Uttha in word. Sukriti Uttha means coming from pious activity done by your past birth. Just like Sipad Bhakti Sarmaha, you want to explain that due to your past activity in which you, done, you have done past past births, like someone very handsome, someone very wealthy, someone very intelligent, for them, very hard to surrender, lotus feet of Banafet Gurudev 
and very hard to see with all Vaishnavas. Oh, I am so aristocrat family. I come from aristocrat family. How I can sit all this fallen soul? Not possible for me to sit together with them. And they cannot, they not care for any Vaishnavas. Just like, I can give one example. Once Naradisi was traveling, and two sons of Kuber, Nalkubar and Monigri, they are playing with angels. Sing Naradrisi. That girls, they took their cloth and hiding behind a tree and pay their obeisances. But two boys, Nalkubar and Monigri, became very angry and told, Oh, sadly person, you have no other way to die for your die. Why you come here? In these circumstances, Srimad Bhagavatam has told, Janmai Sarja Sruta Sri Vieda Mana Madapuman Naivar Hatta Vidhatum Vai Tamakinchana Gocharam If you take birth from an aristocratic family and you have too much wealth very beautiful. and very beautiful, very handsome and very intelligent then and very educated then false ego bound to come and you will be popped up. Oh! Oh! You are like jaw, like inert. Okay, you will be tree. Then they feel immediate. Their sense is going to be down, down, down. Then they pull flag on the lotus feet of Navadrisi. Oh Prabhu, please excuse me. Navadrisi told, my word is infallible. It never go in vain. But I can make some concession for you both. You will be tree. But you will be tree in the courtyard of Nanda Maharaj. When Supreme Personally Godhead Krishna is incarnate in this world, by His touch, He will be delivered from this world again. So, any saintly person, highly bonafide Rukta Mahabhagavati is giving you cars or benediction, both are same. If Narada will never give it to cars, there is no chance, maybe very small chance to get liberated from this position. But Narada Singh, what he did? This when Krishna incarnated, Satya Vidhatum Nijabhitta Bhasitam. Now this is cast time that Krishna will touch you and deliver you from this world. So keep the Naradisi's word true. Krishna touched them when Mother Jasoda binded Krishna with grinder mortar. By that touch, they delivered from this world and they became Madhu Kantha and Snigdha Kantha. They are glorifying Krishna's first time in the council of Nanda Maharaj and other Brajabasis, Madhu Kantha in one group and Srinidha Kantha in another group. Some in Gopis group, some in other Brajabasis group. Srinidha Kantha, other Brajabasis group explaining Krishna's pastime and Madhu Kantha explaining in Krishna's pastime in Gopis group, like Madhu Sneha and Krita Sneha. So, this, why it happened? For them, these four qualities, material qualities, Due to Sukriti Uttha Anartha. Duskriti Uttha Anartha. What bad activity you have done in your past birth? For this, you have to suffer so many ways. Like if you see in seventh canto, there one slok is there. Which bad activity you have done for this what kind of disease you have to suffer? Explain in chapter chapter's commentary. So why this disease is coming? Then you can understand. Which activity you have done in past birth, like taking alcohol to kill others, is explained clearly in Vishwan Chakrasavur commentary. Why? Due to Duskriti Uttanartha. You are thinking, oh, I am doing bhajan, I never criticize anyone. Why this bad thing is coming to me? Why? Due to Duskriti Uttanartha, which you have done in our past, past birth. So you have to be careful. And Duskriti Uttha, Sukti Uttha, Bhakti Uttha. Bhakti Uttha means not Para Bhakti, not Uttama Bhakti, Apara Bhakti. When you are in Apara Bhakti stage, not pure Bhakti has come yet, then what happened? You are getting so many name and fame. Then you said, oh, ki chinu ki hanu, what I have, I had, I, what I became. Oh, people are glorifying me so much. They are praising me so much, they are worshipping me. Oh, I am greater than any Bonafide Vaishnava and Bonafide Guru. I am greater than anyone in this world. You become popped up. 
if you popped up at that time, it's very hard to be very careful. There is so many chance to fall down from your position. Getting their praise and name and fame by your followers who love you, you become very cheerful. And you interpreting, you are representing the wrong Siddhanta. And all people are laughing, you are thinking, oh, I am being so nice. You become very cheerful. And later on, is go to one other Vaishnavas who knows of Siddhanta or Guru Bhad Padma. Then, what will be? Then you will be chastised by them or they will check you. Don't do so. Then you will be tearful. For this, first tearful, then tearful. Have to be most careful. Otherwise, you have to suffer so many ways. <laughs> what has happened? Due to Aparad Uttha Bhakti, is Bhakti Uttha Anartha. And Aparad Uttha Anartha. Which Aparad you have done, like Nama Parad, Seva Parad, Dhamma Parad, Vasnava Parad. For this Aparad, you are suffering so many ways. If you know, I am not doing nothing, but which Aparad you have done past birth, we could not advance in Krishna consciousness so rapidly. Think, oh, somebody came later on me and is rapidly so much, but I could not do so. What is the cause? Because I have done so many operas in past birth. For this reason, I am suffering so many ways to rapid, so many obstacles coming to rapid progress in Krishna consciousness. So you have to be careful all this. When you overcome all this thing, then Srimad Bhagavat has told, Nasta prayesu avadresu nittang bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke bhakti bhavati maistiki Nasta prayesu avadresu 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 anartha Not completely gone yet. Nasta prayesu avadresu. Some anartha is still there. Then what have to do? Nittam bhagavata sevaya you have to serve Bhagavat every day, eternally. Two Bhagavats are there. Dantha Bhagavat and Bhakta Bhagavat. Under guidance of Bhakta Bhagavat, you have to serve Dantha Bhagavat. If you do so, then one day will come very soon, then your Bhakti will be no sticky, transferred into Nishtha. Then our, some hope, then you should not deviate from our Krishna consciousness. Hare Krishna. Bancha Kalbata Rupasya Kipa Sindhu Bhari Raja Patita Nanta Vamitho Vesna 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 First four on earth First four Sarup Sarup Hanthi Chakshu Sarup Hanthi Mr. Chan Kripa Sindhvevacham Patita Nam Pabhanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namaha So, Shila Gurudev. You should go. First four. So, Shila Gurudev has... Type four men and then... Shila Gurudev has ordered me to speak on the anatas which are described by Srila Bhakti Nautakoa in Sri Bhajan Mahasyam. So first is Sarup Brahm. This is illusion about one's identity. This Sarup Brahm, it has four divisions. Paratattva Brahm, um, um, Sadhya Sadhan Brahm, um, what's it? Bhakti Virodhi, So the first is Paratattva Brahm, that one has illusion about the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For instance, many people from Hindu culture, then they will think that Lord Shiva, He is Supreme, Durga, She is Supreme, that Ganesh is Supreme, and in this way, they will think that all different demigods that are Supreme, and they will not understand. Ete chamsa kalapum sa krishnas tu bhagavan swayam. In rai vakalam lokam rindayanti yuge yuge. That Sri Krishna, he is swayam bhagavan, the original supreme personality of Godhead. Which Krishna? Not Dwakadish Krishna, Madras Krishna, but Brajendranandan Krishna in Vraj. That he is original supreme personality of Godhead. And he has his 
incarnations and expansions. So, more subtly, that one may be worshipping deities and may be worshipping Radha Krishna, Sita Ram, Lakshman Hanuman, etc. And worshipping, worshipping all with thinking that all is same, that all is same mood. Not understanding that according to Tattva, Tattva Bichar, that there's no difference between Krishna, Ram, Narayan. But according to Rasvicha, according to Mellows, that then, um, that there is speciality and that Krishna and Vrindavan, that he is topmost. So without understanding this, this also is Paratattva Brahma. If a person is <coughs> worshipping in one throne, one altar, a person, a person, Radha Krishna, Gaura Nityananda, and also and also he has kept there Ramachandra, Nishingha Dev. Then what is this? Your bhakti or not? No. Because one should understand that according to the um, different deities that one is worshipping, then there are different modes. That Radha and Krishna, they are Vrindavan. So you cannot worship Radha and Krishna and also Sita Ram, Lakshman, Hanuman, they are in Ayodhya Dham. And if, worship a, if anyone worshipping Radha Krishna and Gauritya in the same altar, is it right? No, it's not right. Why? Because you are worshipping Radha and Krishna. And Radha and Krishna, they engage in their divine pastimes. But at the same time, worshipping on the same altar, Gornitai. Who is Lord Nityananda? Lord Nityananda is Balaram. Lord Balaram, he is elder brother of Krishna. So, Radha and Krishna, their pastimes will be inhibited by the presence of Lord Balaram or Lord Nityananda. So in this way, worshipping all together, then it will, be, it will create some, um, there will be some fault. Then next, Jiva Brahm. Um, an illusion about the identity of the living entity. For instance, in Chaitanya Chaitamita, it is stated, Jiveris Rupahoy, Krishna Nichadas, that the living entity is the eternal servant of Krishna. So this indicates that we, we are all servants of Krishna, that we all have been serving Krishna, that we have all come from that place, Goloka Vrindavan, from Vaikuntha. But the next line says, Krishna Tatasa, Krishna Tatasa, Beda Beda Prakash. Krishna Tatasa Shakti Beda Beda Prakash. That what is the origin of the living entity? That the living entity is emanating from the Tatasta Shakti. That this region, which is the borderline between the material and the transcendental world. So, one who is, first of all, in ignorance of one's identity as a, a minute part and parcel of the Supreme Lord, um, eternal servant of Krishna, and one who is in ignorance about one's origin, then this all comes under the category of Jiva Surup Brahm. Jiva Brahm. Then, next is um, Sadhya Sadhan Tattva Brahm. That one will um, not understand what is the ultimate goal of life. The ultimate goal of life is to achieve Krishna Prem. And what is the process to achieve Krishna Prem is to take to the process of Bhakti. So, so many people, they may take to the process of Karma, Gyan, Yoga, in trying to achieve the ultimate goal. So this is illusion. And even one comes to the process of bhakti, but is not clear, first about what is the goal. So many times Srila Gurudev he quotes, Kriti sadhya bhavet sadhya bhavasa sadhana vidha, nitya siddhasya bhavasya prakatam riti sadhyata. That to perform sadhan bhakti, then first one has to set eye on the goal. That what is the goal? That we want to achieve bhav bhakti. And this, where is this Bhav Bhakti, this Nitya Siddhasya Bhava Syam, that this mood is eternally there, is situated within the heart, but also it's situated within the heart of the Nitya Parikas, the eternal associates. So one who is rendering devotional service in Anugatya, under the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, who is endowed with Surup Shakti, the transcendental energy of the Lord, then that Surup Shakti, coming originally from Shimati Radhika, coming through the Nitya Parikas, and then coming through Guru Parampara and through Gurudev, this will also come into that devotee who is performing with that one-pointed goal. One may be chanting Hare Krishna, 
engage in deity worship, engage in so many services. But if one hasn't got mind fixed on the goal, that what is it that I want to achieve, then this will be this type of illusion, such as sudden tattva brahm, an ignorance about the process of devotional service. So hence we see that I can speak for myself, engage in devotional service for over 20 years, but not making very, very um, steady, rapid progress. Why? Because of this, um, this anatta, this illusion of not being fixed, focused, one-pointed, and very enthusiastic to achieve the goal. So what is the goal initially to achieve Bhav Bhakti? So then we should have some idea, some conception. What is Bhav Bhakti? What is Thai Bhav? The different Ratis, um, Shantarati, Dasyarati, Sakyarati, Vatsalyarati, Madhurarati. And then from there we should know what is Bibhav, Alambana, Udipan, um, then Vishoy Alambana, Ashray um, Alambana. Then we should know what is Anubhav, what is Asasat Bhav, and what is um, Vyabhichari Bhav. Mm? Then having some conception of what this is, and understanding those personalities who perform sudden and achieve such goal and beyond, and understanding, getting some inspiration by their example, and then engaging in sudden. With that understanding, then we can actually become free from this sonata. Then next is um. Four has been One more. Bhajan Rirodhi Vishaya Brahm. Those um philosophies which are against the um true conceptions of Shuddha Bhakti, then this comes under this, especially Maya conceptions. Thank you. We should also know that this is Iron Age or Kalyug. Uh, we think that uh, we should collect Govardhan Sila and we should worship. We should uh, bring Salagram Sila and we should do or Dwarka Sila or we should do other things but they will not be fruitful. That is, it has been told, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Hare Nam, Mai Vakhe Valam, Kalau Nas Sevan, Nas Sevan, Nas Sevan. You should always remember. Don't be so much engaged in Acha. This is not in the line of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. They are, they all accept Bhav Seva. Bhav Seva. In the line of Rupa Sanatana and others. When anyone can do, but not so fruitful, your mind is not what? Pure. In Achan, Shuddha ghee, Shuddha butter, Shuddha, so many things, paraphernalia as needed. Now you cannot have, you will have to fix your mind in Achan, but you cannot do. So, Achan is difficult. It was for Dwapar Yuga. As stories, you cannot do. It was only in Treta Yuga. Or so they will, or any process, accept or nam sankirtan. Right? There are so many kirtans, lila kirtan, rup kirtan, and all others. But they are all, they are all including in me. So give more emphasis, prominency to chant name in the line, what we are telling, then you will be successful. Otherwise your life, many lives may be given in Archan, and then you will have to come on the same point in Kali Yuga. So try to chant name with affection. If no affection, no harm. Anyhow you should continue. Serving your Guru there, always in his uh, guidance. That is why it has been told. Jantannam rupa charita de sukhasamaha. Kramina rasana manasi nyuja. 
Okirtan. But how? Engaging your mind of the of Krishna past time. And chanting. Oh, this is so high class of uh, Nam Bhaja. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given this line. I think our all Guru Parampara is giving. Especially in Western countries. Oh, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj, my Shiksha Guru. Oh, he all, he engaged all in Nam Sankirtan. Because they cannot be pure. Their mind cannot be pure. So better they should be first engaged in Nam Sankirtan. So all, you should always engage your mind in Nam Sankirtan. Nam Sankirtan especially swaying he Krishna and Radha. Nothing. Prajandananda. No meaning of oh, uh, Hare Krishna or Krishna. Only Prajandananda and Shamsha. We but prefer Radha Kant, Gopi Kant, Radha Kant, Rash Pihari, like this. So we should knock down all these things. Now I think that uh, uh, Brahma play, they should be ready. Uh, in ten minutes they should be ready and we were. So you come. After that, three. Go on, go on. Otherwise, all are fixed up. Om. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Ajnana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshuruna Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha So we are discussing the different types of anartas. The four different categories of anartas, one of those categories was just explained, Swarup Brahm. So then there is the next category, which is called Asat Trishna. So Asat Trishna means that we have a Trishna. Trishna means thirst, uh, a desire, a thirst. For what? For the asat. That which is uh, temporary, that which is not reality. So, this is the disease of the conditioned soul within this world. He comes within this world forgetting Krishna, and Maya captures him, and he becomes enveloped by so many illusory material desires. So, asat trishna is one of the aparads which is arising within the heart of the conditioned soul because of so much ignorance, avidya, of his eternal identity. So now he begins to desire the temporary things of this world. There are four categories of such temporary asat desires. First category is the desires for the ordinary enjoyments of this material world. <clears throat> we see in this material world Everyone is after the three W's, as Sripad uh, Bhaktivedanta Madhav Maharaj likes to tell. Wine, women, and wealth. Huh? He'll have to tell the nine D's, I forget them. <laughs> so, <clears throat> they are desiring temporary sense pleasures of all varieties, unlimited varieties. And their mind is completely absorbed in calculating how they will acquire all these different sensual pleasures. Better house, bigger house, bigger bank balance, nicer car, better computer, better, a different wife, different husband. And in this way, uh, the conditioned soul desires mundane sense pleasure, which is obtainable here, within this earthly plane. But also, his desires become even farther extended than that, because he desires to go even beyond this mundane plane within this world and to attain higher temporary material pleasures which are available in upper planets, higher planets within this universe, Svarga Lok. So he performs so many different types of Vedic ritualistic activities uh, described in Karma Kanda section of the Vedas. And then he desires to be elevated in his next life 
to go to Swarga to enjoy in different heavenly planets such as the moon planet and so many others. So then another type of desire beyond that is the desire for mystic yogic powers. There are eight different types of siddhis which are obtainable for the conditioned soul within this world if he practices the Astanga Yoga system, Anima, Lagima, Prapti, and so forth. He can become smaller than the smallest, great, make himself expand into a very huge size, very big. He can extend his hand out and obtain so many different uh, objects from anywhere that he desires. He can transport himself here and there. So in this way, he desires to have materialistic powers which are on the subtle level. And this is a asat trishna, because these kind of desires will only uh, reward him with temporary happiness. And then the fourth type of asat trishna is the desire for moksha, for liberation. After he has exhausted his attempts within this material world to enjoy, and he realizes that there is no enjoyment here within this world, all is simply a place of misery. Abrahma Bhuvana Loka, Punar Arvar Tenor Juna. Every everywhere, from the top planet of this material universe down to the lowest, even Lord Brahma has to die. Uh, so he understands this is not worthy of trying to attempt to attain these things. So therefore he desires moksha, liberation. And he performs so much tapasya, so much penance and austerity, and he cultivates jnana, and he uh, begins to analyze neti neti, not this, not this, and he becomes absorbed in, in the desire to obtain oneness with the supreme absolute in the form of brahman, all pervasive absolute. So in this way, all four of these different types of material desires, asat trishna. A uh, thirst for the temporary things of this world are anartas within the heart. And they must be eradicated in order for a person to enter into the path of pure bhakti. In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Rupa Goswami tells, Bhukti Mukti Spriha Yavak, Pishachi Yadi Vartate, Krishna Bhakti Sukasyatra, Katam Abhyu Dayo Dayet. This means that uh, as long as there is desire for bhukti, material enjoyments within this world, and mukti, uh, the liberation from this world, then how is it possible uh, for the heart to feel the transcendental happiness of pure bhakti? It is not possible. So these are aparad, these types of um, anartas have to be given up. So then the next category is vridaya dorbalyam. Oh, you. Very short. The remaining two. Eight. So, Srila Gurudev ordered me to speak on the remaining eight anartas. There are two categories. Each category has four in, in each one. One is, we have discussed aparat. This aparat is divided, of, this aparat means offense. Apagata Radha Yasmat aparat. When you do something without affection, it will be an offense. If we will speak with Vaishnavas without affection, it will be offense. If we will chant Harinam without affection, it will be offense. So we should try to do all devotional activities with affection. Then it will not be apparat. Here, these apparats have been divided into four. Srila Bhaktinoda Thakur explains. First one is Nam apparat. Second one is the Seva apparat. Third one is Aparat to the Surupa of Krishna. And the fourth one is Jiva Aparat. That means it will make an obstacle in our devotional service if we make any difficulties or offense to any living entity. Jiva Aparat. Even non devotees, even not humans, even trees and animals. We should not commit offenses to any living entity, otherwise, it will make an obstacle in our devotional service. So these are four types of offense. Then, the next category, last category, is called Ridai Durbalya, or weakness of heart. Hmm? What does it mean, weakness of heart? Weakness of heart is manifested in, first of all, Pratishta Asha, the desire for name and fame. The desire to be honored by others is considered to be a great weakness. After that, Kutinati. 
Kutinati means diplomatic behavior, duplicity. And then after that, the next weakness of heart is called the fault finding. So, seeing en that means enviousness of others. Due to being envious of others, one finds fault in them. And the last type of Rida Dobaya, weakness of heart, is called Tucha Asakti, or becoming attached to insignificant things. So in this way, we have completed the description of 16 types of Aparad. Uh, 16 types of Anatta. Then your Bhakti may come in Nishtha, otherwise not. And if there is no Nishtha, no ruchi at all, no testing, chanting, remembering, hearing, harikatha. So be careful for all these things. Now, what is nishtha, we will explain tomorrow in class. And now, they should be ready for drama play. Yasumati Nanda. Hare Krishna. Tomorrow morning, there will be initiations. At 8.30, the devotees who will be receiving initiation, please come to the house where Srila Gurudev stays. And devotees in Melbourne, shave up. Everybody should be clean, cloth, no taking anything and bathing, putting tea lock, everything. Come at 8 o'clock and be ready by 8.30 then for initiation. No eating. You can drink some water, but don't take any solid food. And everybody should be recommended by any senior devotee. Yeah.